My grandpa was born in the last years of the 19th century and spent his entire life living in rural Idaho as a farmer and rancher. He had tons of old cowboy stories he would tell us grandkids. Most of them were funny, some were cautionary, but a few were downright creepy. When my grandpa was six years old, he, along with his older brother and a gang of kids from nearby farms, decided to go ice skating for the day. At the time, my great-grandpa was working as a ranch hand and the family lived near Chesterfield, Idaho. Now, mostly a ghost town. It was a bright and sunny January day in 1902 and though the temperature was low, the sun kept things somewhat warm. They'd hitched sleighs to their horses and headed down to the Pontoof River to ice skate. There were eight kids all together and they were excited to show off their new skates from Christmas. Along with my grandpa and his brother, there were the three Robinson kids, Tommy Bear and the Gooch twins. The best spot to skate was next door to the Gooch's ranch. The river there was broad and shallow so the ice tended to be thicker and if they did fall through they would just get their legs wet. The kids spent a couple hours skating when a loud scream came from a willow bush on the riverbank opposite them. The kids could only watch as a giant man covered head to toe in thick black fur came lumbering out of the bushes. It was carrying a large tree branch and was screaming in rage at the kids. They fled towards the sleighs trying to scramble up the riverbank in their skates. My grandpa being the youngest was at the back of the rush. He couldn't get a good foothold because of his skates and fell back towards the ice. The giant was now crossing the river towards them, screaming and swinging his branch. My grandpa was sure this creature was going to eat him. As my grandpa tells it, Lady Luck smiled down on me that day by the river. Because as the giant was midway across the river, the ice gave way. It only submerged its shins, but was slowed down considerably as it tried to get back on top of the ice. This gave my grandpa's brother enough time to jump down and cut the laces off my grandpa's skates. They left the skates and dashed up the riverbank and jumped onto one of the sleigh. As they looked back, the giant man was cresting the riverbank. To their relief, it didn't chase the sleighs. It just stood there hollering at the kids and swinging its tree branch. The kids were able to make it back to the Gooch Ranch where they told their encounter to John Gooch, the twins' grandfather. Word spread quickly in the tiny farming community and soon a posse was formed to hunt down the beast. Where the kids had been skating, there was found footprints almost two feet in length. My grandpa's skates were found near the tracks. They had both been bent in half like horseshoes. The posse followed them as far as they could, but deep snow prevented their travel any further. The creature was never sighted in the area again. This story captivated the small community and soon were traveled across the country of the Idaho wild man. Here is a link to a newspaper article describing the event. That spring, my great-grandpa decided to buy a ranch in the Little Lost River Valley, farther north in Idaho. My grandpa had many other weird and creepy backwoods stories, but he always said that this encounter frightened him the most. He was sure he would have been killed if the giant hadn't broken through the ice and given his brother a chance to cut his laces.